Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1008. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about that crypto executive order that came out from the president and why that is good for XRP. Now, many people were listening to my XRP versus Ripple stock, which is a better investment, and that got a lot of traction. So if you're here because of that, welcome. And I think you're going to like what I have to say about the executive order as well, because I also think that points to very good news for XRP. The executive order was very long and detailed, but also it was a general document that basically set out for the next 180 days some guidelines for things that will eventually turn into crypto law. Some of the highlights include data privacy and security, financial stability and systemic risk, crime, national security, the ability to exercise human rights, financial inclusion and equity, and energy demand and climate change. Now, each one of those areas has some very specific things that I think are going to come into law in the future in regard to cryptocurrencies. And that's a good thing because the more clarity we have on crypto, the more legit, if you will, it's going to be. And once it's legal and legitimized, then we can have the institutions come in in a bigger way. We already are having some custody discussions from companies like State Street, which is the big custodian for brokerages. So companies like Fidelity and Charles Schwab, et cetera, custody their securities through State Street. State Street is now looking at custodying cryptocurrency for those same institutions. So this is going to eventually lead to stock brokerages being able to offer cryptocurrencies to their clients. And once we get to that, then we get everybody wanting to invest in cryptocurrencies. And we probably at some point will reach a bubble peak But we're far from that at this point. We are so early, we don't even have legislation yet. So this is in our future, and this is where I think we're going to be going. Just like when the internet came into being, and eventually internet stocks went crazy and we had a big tech bubble, that will happen someday in crypto too. But I believe that's years away, because to have a bubble, you have to have everybody in. And that's really what a bubble is, when everyone already owns it and there's no one else to invest. That happens with new technology, and it happens with exciting investment returns like we see in cryptocurrencies. But again, we are far, far from that. This is step one toward getting legislation to be able to open the floodgates to everybody who wants to invest in cryptocurrencies. And I think once it is legal and more available and securely custodied, and those are all three very important pieces, that yes, we will be able to see a booming time in cryptocurrency, but we're just not quite there yet. But the advantage of us being early is we're able to accumulate at these low prices. We're not going to see prices under a dollar for some of our favorite cryptocurrencies like XRP for that much longer. So accumulate while you can. Someday you will miss being able to invest at these very low prices. I promise you that. And you don't want to have those regrets saying to yourself, why didn't I scoop up more when it was below a dollar when I could have? So back to the executive order. I'm just going to pick out a couple of points that really stood out to me. This one really did. The United States has an interest in ensuring that it remains at the forefront of responsible development and design of digital assets and the technology that underpins new forms of payments and capital flows in the international financial system 
particularly in setting standards that promote democratic values, the rule of law, privacy, the protection of consumers, investors, and businesses, and interoperability with digital platforms, legacy architecture, and international payment systems. Well, to me, bells were ringing when I heard that because, of course, who is the premier provider of payment systems and interoperability with digital platforms and particularly with legacy architecture like the SWIFT system? Ding, ding, ding. It's XRP, of course. XRP is the neutral bridge currency that can bridge the SWIFT system and convert one thing of value to another, whether that's one currency to another, whether that's a tokenized commodity such as gold or silver, whether that is a stock, whether that's a derivative. Any form that can be tokenized, XRP can be the neutral bridge to convert that into another form of value. The executive order also mentions, quote, making investments and domestic and cross-border funds transfers and payments cheaper, faster, and safer, and by promoting greater and more cost-efficient access to financial products and services. Well, again, bells went off in my head. Ding, ding, ding. Cross-border funds transfers and payments cheaper, faster, safer. What do we know about XRP? We know that the speed per transaction is three seconds. We know the cost is less than a fraction of a penny. And we know it's scalable with over 1,500 transactions per second. But it didn't stop there. It went on to say, and reduces negative climate impacts and environmental pollution as may result from some cryptocurrency mining. Ding, 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 bullseye, okay? I mean, bells were ringing all over the place because XRP is a green energy. It is not a cryptocurrency miner. In a nutshell, to be very simplistic, the way cryptocurrency miners work is proof of work, where all these different computers do complex calculations, and therefore it requires a lot of energy to power those computers to do all of that, and it can take more energy than some small countries use in a year. It's not a green form of energy. Now, when you look at XRP and how it operates in proof of stake, proof of stake is a type of consensus mechanism that's used to validate cryptocurrency transactions. Owners of the crypto can stake their coins, which gives them the right to check new blocks of transactions and add them to the blockchain. And it is a green energy. It doesn't take a whole bunch of computers mining to do its work. It's very fast, it's very efficient, And that's how it can operate so quickly, so inexpensively, and also be a green energy. So to me, this executive order was very clearly telling us that XRP is the winner and is the chosen one, if you will, and not Ethereum or Bitcoin, who are slow, expensive to operate and to transfer and are not scalable. Bitcoin handling 32 transactions per second versus XRP at 1,500, and Ethereum at 16 transactions per second. The differences are glaring, and now we have it in black and white in this executive order, telling us in no uncertain terms They want environmentally friendly cryptocurrency. So this executive order lays out clearly what the laws are going to be looking for and eliminating the criminal aspect of cryptocurrency is also going to be very important. And I was encouraged to see that freedom is something important in this executive order. And also to see that Congressman Tom Emmer suggested legislation that would prohibit the U.S. Federal Reserve from issuing a CBDC, a central bank digital currency, directly to individuals. By not allowing the Federal Reserve to control the wallets, we're going to have private wallets, we're going to have the ability to not have someone have centralized control over our wallets. 
And that's really an important thing. So I'm happy to see that Tom Emmer is leading the charge with this. We are going to have privacy and we are not going to have this oversight or control at the government level. And let's all hold them accountable and make sure they do that correctly. Now, I also want to talk about central bank digital currencies because there's a lot of confusion about them right now. And this order, I think, is going to bring about a central bank digital currency, which will be a government form of our currency. And I think this will happen with governments all around the world. And over 110 countries have already said that they are working on central bank digital currency. So we know that this has been in process for many, many years. One of the things that Ripple has said about what a central bank digital currency needs to do is, quote, to enable a truly efficient global market, a bridge currency must be specifically optimized for payments and support the same speed, scalability, low cost, and security that CBDCs will provide. And that to me exactly describes XRP. So let's look at what is really going on behind the scenes with central bank digital currencies. Are they almost ready? Would a war or cyber attack cause the speeding up of central bank digital currencies? And why did the U.S. president issue an executive order the same day that Dubai passed a digital asset law? Was that just a coinkydink or are they being rolled out regionally? because also on the same day, the Philippines announced a central bank digital currency pilot program, and so did India. But it gets more interesting. There was an article from October 2021 that stated 110 countries are looking into central bank digital currencies. It also said the National Bank of Ukraine was reportedly testing a central bank digital currency on the Stellar blockchain, but the launch date was unknown. Ukraine? Hmm, that's really interesting. So Ukraine had been working on a central bank digital currency. The article also says Ripple and Stellar are forming central bank digital currencies. Ripple partnered with Bhutan to trial a central bank digital currency. It also piloted a private version of its XRP ledger designed specifically for central banks, quote unquote. That, once again, confirms a private central bank ledger that we know is running behind the scenes. The reason why it's running behind the scenes is because the central banks did not like the transparency of people being able to see how much money was being moved to what wallets. Because blockchains have that transparency, they asked Ripple to provide a private ledger for them. And that is where big money has been moving for a long time on a private basis. A couple of days ago, Dubai announced it approved a law to regulate virtual assets. His Highness the Sheikh Mohammed said, Today we are participating in designing the future of virtual assets globally. And that was in their new law that was passed, the Virtual Asset Regulatory Authority. As I said, the Philippines also launched a CBDC pilot a couple days ago, the same day the EO came out. The project aims to improve the payment system's safety, resiliency, and efficiency. This is, quote, continued research and development in the CBDC space from other central banks, including the U.S. Federal Reserve. Now, the Federal Reserve came out with a paper as well on the day of the EO, and it said, basically, we're looking into CBDCs, but we haven't made a decision to do one yet. China, as we know, has already rolled out the digital yuan at the Olympics. It's important for you to understand that a CBDC is not the same as a cryptocurrency. According to Google, a CBDC is just the digital form of the legal currency used in the country and is not a private currency. So we have central bank digital currencies that are coming that will be official government currencies, just like paper money is. We have other central bank digital currencies that seem to be coordinated globally, starting with certain countries. For example, the Bermuda sand dollar was the first. And because they use dollars in Bermuda, they could act like a test or a proxy to a country that's on the U.S. dollar. So in my opinion, there's a lot of coordination going on around the world. And that has to be that way because the banking system 
can't work independently of other countries. If you're going to have global trade, you've got to all be in agreement. And that's why I believe the banking system, the central banks of the world, governments of the world have been working on central bank digital currencies for years. So in summary, we have the executive order that came out that was very good news for XRP. We have central bank digital currencies being coordinated, rolled out regionally, and very much underway. While the executive order gave a 180-day timeline for some of this legislation, this might be something we see much sooner. But all in all, I was very pleased to see it was very positive for XRP. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And my entire library of podcasts is on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.